I'm telling you, this Martian problem isn't going to fix itself. They were going to execute us. We, we barely got off that rock alive. Come on, they were trying to save their planet. From their own slaves. If those sequids ever take over, Earth is next. We need to strike first. Send up that invincible guy again. <laughs> You're talking about starting an interplanetary war. Hey, panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Art. And I'm Jamie. And this is Panels to Pixels podcast, and we are continuing our coverage of Invincible Season 2 that's on Amazon Prime. And within this episode, we are going to do a spoiler review of Episode 2, which is entitled, In About Six Hours, I Lose My Virginity to a Fish. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, obviously a uh, show that was based on the comic book series by Robert Kirkman, and it's on Amazon Prime, like I stated. So uh, those of you who have not watched the episode, like I said, spoiler review, stop this episode of the podcast. Go watch it. Obviously, you listeners know who've been with us know exactly what we do. But uh, those who have not watched the episode and don't want to be spoiled, stop it now. The uh, the podcast now and then just come back later and just listen to us we'll wait for you yeah for those of you that uh, love to be spoiled like myself at times because i like to have fun and do that at times stay with us so uh invincible season two episode two in about six hours i lose my virginity to a fish the synopsis for this particular episode is it's summer break for mark and his friends but super villains don't take a vacation Mark is forced to face the consequences of Omni-Man's double life. And that's straight from Amazon Prime, by the way. Yeah. So, Initial thoughts, Jamie. What do you have? Well, one, that is a really fun title. It is. <laughs> <laughs> and kind of like the title, there was a lot going on in this episode. It was kind of it was kind of tough to keep up with everything going on. Yeah. Like every time I look down to write something, I look back up and we're in Completely different scene, completely different bad guy. Or completely different uh, person in their own situation. You know, we got the Guardians of the Galaxy. We got Debbie dealing with a new, like, the house being sold. Yeah. Well, she puts, yeah. Yeah, she's basically putting it up for sale. I, was that her house or was it she's just a realtor? Or is she a realtor? I'm trying to remember because it was, uh, from my understanding... No, because the guy told her to go home. So that can't be her house. Oh. Oh, okay. I, I was under the impression. But then again, they all look like cookie cutters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like modular homes. <laughs> Something that uh, the company is actually fixed up to due to like damage. <laughs> uh, the Guardians of the Globe have to deal with the, the reptilians. And Lizard uh, League. A uh, lizard league. I call them the reptilians. Uh, <laughs> and then on top of that, we get uh, Mark has to deal with graduation in this episode. He also has to deal with the Atlanteans based upon Omni Man destroying their. Did they? Did he kill the king? I forget. Yeah, he killed the king. But we, I mean, we started with Doc. With we had Doc Seismic. We have the Atlanteans. We have. Um, for a hot minute that Batman wannabe, whose name I can't remember. Oh, yeah. Um, the Lizard League, which Mark didn't fight, but it's still bad guys that were in this episode. Yeah. <laughs> Shapes Shifter, who I guess now is part of the Guardian, or Shape Smith, who is now part of the Guardians. Yep. And then, which, that's something to talk about. <laughs> and then um, at the very end, we had Angstrom. Like, we had so many bad guys. Yeah. And then that doesn't count the human-ish struggles going on. That's just bad guys. Well, the human-ish one is literally the graduation. The kids trying to move forward with everyday life. Uh, we see Eve. She doesn't want to play superhero, but she wants to help out the world. Their friend William, who is knowing of their superhero powers. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> he wants I missed to him fun. last week. He wants to have fun. And Amber... Trying to, uh, you know, not take advantage of her superhero boyfriend, but uh, basically enjoy 
her boyfriend, you know, yeah, as a boyfriend. Which you should do. Yeah. So it, it's the it's still that whole growing up aspect that Mark has to deal with, Amber has to deal with, even Eve has to deal with too, because she has to deal with her own parents at a certain point. There's a lot going on within the episode. Very subtle at times that if you think about it, if you just let you know play the episode casually, but after a few viewings or a couple of viewings, you do get what's going on within the episode, which really drives us for uh, wanting to know what's going to come next. Because yeah. everybody's dealing with their own little nuance issues. Like, you know, if you look at Debbie as well, because she's still suffering. Yeah. And Robert Kirkman likes to drop little seeds that bloom way later. That is true. Yeah. And that's through the comic verse. Uh, what has been adapted is a little bit different. So those of you comic book <laughs> readers that are out there that read Invincible, uh, there's probably a little bit more in there that was left out or more that, you know, you want to see come sooner because you you're ahead of the game, obviously. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I, I did enjoy the episode just as well. Uh, I'm looking forward to see what we have. Like, like you said, last episode, we only get four episodes for the season. Yeah. We're already halfway through. We're already halfway through. And they're only about 45 minutes, maybe close to 50 minutes per episode. So they're trying to fill in a lot of content, a lot of uh, information for us, but also move the story along. And I'm pretty sure as soon as season three comes out, it's going to be longer, which will be great. But uh, were there any favorite moments within this episode that you liked? Um, I still I love Debbie. Um, <laughs> like she's such a real character. Like she's hmm. our true human. Like she has human emotion. She's a great mom. She goes to protect her son, goes to Cecil to try and keep Mark safe and stand up for him. Um, and you know, she has a good conversation with him about like, look, this is your last summer as a kid. Just enjoy it. It's yeah. already like, I'm not a kid, you know, kids, not kids been taken away from me but she's trying um it sh i'm glad she stood up to that jerk at the open house yeah like she's not your property or whatever she said she's not your pet that was it oh yeah and that really took her off that like triggered her yeah that guy of, was a d-bag he was <laughs> a d-bag he was a complete jerk um and then you know she got home and she just broke down melted down whatever yeah and had you know had her freak out that sometimes you just got to get that out and like luckily mark was there to give her you know to hold her at the end which mm. was really sweet it is sweet well you know obviously uh, he is human he is viltrum but the thing is he was brought up to be human so yeah obviously you know family matters most and he does love his mom so it makes sense the fact that he's there you know, but the fact is, is like with college coming up, he's not going to be there and he's going to try to live his own life, but also be <laughs> invincible at the same time. And it's going to be a challenge just the same. I think that's probably what we're looking more into when we get to season three at that point, his struggle of uh, duality as a hero, as well as being a person. He's, it's bad enough. He's dealing with it already. But also with the aftermath of his father, his father's death, not his, father, not his father's death, but the fact that his father destroyed everything and he can't really say, hey, Omni-Man's my dad. But yeah, it's it, it's a struggling life. I would yeah. not want that or wish that on anybody. <laughs> no. And then, you know, with him going to college, Debbie is going to be a legit empty nester. Like she's got yeah. nobody at home. That is true. She's got no husband. And like, and that was the thing. Like he said she was a pet to him. So when she freaked out on that guy saying she's not your pet, like that was a big Yeah. Trigger. Trigger. I, I yeah. say it as trigger for the fact that a majority of her life was stolen from her. And that when the truth came out of what he was like and who he was in her life 
and what she was what she meant to him really is a hard pill to swallow and to deal with and the one thing i don't want to see is resentment more towards mark because mark is half filtrum yeah i don't think i don't see that coming i just don't want that to happen yeah you know, no she's it, still being a great mom yeah she's still she just, there she for needs her some friends child. Yeah, she 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 definitely. Well, we saw that last episode, and she did have a friend in somebody, one who lives in Russia. <laughs> yeah, but you know, honestly, I think she needs to gather more. Yeah, and I agree. more women in her life too to help her with that struggle too. But yeah, the like I said, yeah, that that was it was definitely portrayed well, but. It's really it's really upsetting to to watch. Uh, one thing that I found interesting was uh, Russ dealing with being a hidden Martian yeah. amongst the astronauts and everything. We got Carrie Payton coming back as astronaut number two, uh, but uh, we see how Russ is dealing it as a representative of uh, Mars. Because uh, the other person that was in the Guardians of the Globe originally who died was a Martian and they, he sees the uh, news footage and everything else and he's all like proud and happy about it. I, I'm, I'm forgetting if Russ was the original Martian, though. I don't remember either, but I still like the like a perfectly normal human. <laughs> But the way he reacts and acts and the fact that he breaks down in the bathroom, too, and talking about, I have four heart, like four hearts. And the other it's guy like, doesn't pick up on it at he all. He doesn't pick it up on it at all. But, you know, the guy picks him up, basically reassures him, like, just like anybody would do for anybody else. You're doing a great job. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, all right, cool. Yeah. But, you know, it, to me, uh, he, I'm looking forward to see what we get more for him. Yeah, he's and. Hopefully he stops eating frozen pizza, still crappy frozen pizza, still frozen. Yeah, <laughs> still frozen. He's got to learn to eat it hot. <laughs> How did all the cheese stay on when he had it hold that way? Because in real in real life, that doesn't all the cheese ends up falling off or it just crumbles off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> End up having to like pick it up and put it back on. <laughs> uh, we got something funny out of the graduation, which I do enjoy. Graduation day, uh, we have Principal Winslow. And of all people who voices Principal Winslow, Reginald Vell Johnson, who yes. played Carl Winslow from Family Matters. Yep. Perfect. And, and of course, uh, he uh, was in Die Hard with Bruce Willis as his uh, Twinkie eating compatriot in the first movie and his friend, best friend in the second movie. Uh, by the way, he is 71 years old. Wow. So I had to look that up. Uh, uh, and I just laugh at the fact that Mark is late, you know, to the graduation because he was too busy superheroing. And he was. And he shows up. He's like, oh, I just missed uh, the over exaggerated it? quotes or the bullshit quotes or whatever it was. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I, I love how, like, that cheesy juxtaposition they did with, like, the speech. And what Mark's doing in DC fighting, like yeah. how it all matched up, like I, as cheesy as it was, I loved how they did it. I did. Uh, it, it reminded me of all things, and I hate saying it. A lot of people like will hate me on the podcast for saying it because people didn't like it, but I'm a fan of it because I love Spider Man, The Amazing Spider Man Two. All right, I can see that. And yeah. then the, in the very beginning, you know, Peter is battling in downtown Manhattan against these people, and it was you know pre rhino but it's the russian guy and uh and then he finally makes it to graduation and obviously aunt may is there and everything else and then you know because uh gwen is there and you know they have that same kind of camaraderie and you know that that talk kind of like amber eve and you know and mark does in, in this particular episode too so i i got that familiarity with it within like comics and shows and movies so i i enjoyed it for that specifics but in this case mark was dealing with doc seismic <laughs> and he was trying to take down the washington monument <laughs> and he did and he goes what about the the trees 
Oh, you could keep your wood monuments. I know. <laughs> Isn't that all buildings? <laughs> That's literally. And then on top of that, you know, and I just love how at the very end, it's like, he's like, I could put it back. I could bring it back Don't up. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. <laughs> we'll take care of this, Mark. Go to graduation. <laughs> and I thought it was cute. Uh but uh, during that graduation, Eve mentions how she was like grateful that she quit superheroing. But did she? Not really. She's still <laughs> saving the world in the sense that she's helping out people. And then she gets ridiculed over it, too. It's like, oh, you scared the crap out of these people as you were filling that building. No, no, no. Like, OK, well, there's no thank mm-hmm. you there. But-, but well, back at the graduation, though, I love again a cheesy little touch where mark throws his cap way and it goes yeah all the way (laughs) but that's kind of like a a throwback to when he got his powers like he threw the trash bag oh that is true yeah kind of a superman moment where he just tosses something it just goes away i feel bad for the person that got the garbage in their face or even the the graduation hat (laughs) That you don't ever see. It could turn terrible. Yeah. <laughs> but the garbage, not so much. Probably it's somebody that's covered in garbage. You're going, what happened? <laughs> uh, I just love that the, after the graduation, uh, though, in the tree house that Eve has, uh, <laughs> use use of her powers to make beer of, from plants. Hey. And they're uh, partying it up. And then uh, she makes one that's like a virgin, what was it, daiquiri or pina yeah. colada? <laughs> I think it's virgin daiquiri. Uh, for Mark, because he's being such a sourpuss. <laughs> he's sourpuss. Well, no, the high schoolers shouldn't be drinking in America. Uh, well, we you all know they it. do anyway. <laughs> and we all did it. But, uh, you know, and it was through that, we know that, you know, we, we see that Eve wants to uh, reconstruct Chicago because it was destroyed because of obviously from last season. But, you know, you, you see the hopefulness in each and every one of them. Yeah. Including Mark when it comes to college and Amber and college. And then, yeah, I love how Will is like, I just want to see some cheesy uh, reality show and then watch it twice. Yeah. <laughs> And I think that's hilarious, too. But it's just, you know, his goofiness, I think. But uh, with that, they they move on after that. And uh, I think the, the what you were talking about earlier was uh, I call him Dark Boy, but it's I, Dark Wings assistant that takes on the traits of. Uh, yeah, he was Nightborn. Nightborn. OK, I think if I, I heard it correctly. Yeah, and now but, he's Darkwing, but he he has voices in his head, and yeah, that, I guess he kills people who did wrong. Yeah, well, I call so, him Dark Boy because he is dark <laughs> and yeah. he's a boy. <laughs> uh, and, I just think it's like Dick Grayson on crack. Dick Grayson yeah. from like uh, you know Batman, if you think about it. But in this guy, he he actually has powers in a sense to trap Mark into something. And Mark uses Darkwing's own fear to stop him yeah. at some point. He just goes all dark on Darkwing <laughs> at a certain point and with the way he's talking to him about it. Uh, all because people fear Omni-Man and technically Omni-Man's son. Or the people that know that he is, obviously, because Darkwing knows who he is. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think within that moment, you know, Mark kind of lost it a little bit, but he was kind of lost within the darkness itself, too, because Cecil couldn't even get through to him. Uh, but I think it all had to do with, like, Mark pressuring himself to do his father's shadow of being the hero and also the villain at a certain point and him trying to prove himself, uh, you know, to uh, make himself different from his own father. Which is good, but sometimes a negative doesn't work for your positive at times. Right. Um, do you have anything on Eve's parents? Because that was interesting. Yes, that yeah, Adam Eve 
Dick's parents. Like her dad was a dick before. He's still a dick. He's a bigger dick. Yeah. Um, I mean, he went to part, flipping burgers now. Yeah. It's not her fault. I can see, like, I can see his points. I can see why he's angry. Yeah. Shouldn't be angry at your daughter, especially if she's trying to help you and gives you a golden apple that you can go hawk for all kinds of money. But, um, like, she's trying to help. She's just, she's a kid. She doesn't know. Like, she wants to do the better for the family. It's for and- her family. She wants to, do, like, with building that apartment, like rebuilding that apartment when she put the pieces up and then the foreman's like, look, one, tell us you scared the shit out of my people. Like, that wasn't yeah. cool. And it's not cool. Like, that is true. Um, and then like the foreman said, like, I don't know if that's up to code. Like, yeah, it sucks that it takes longer. Maybe there's a way for her to work with, with them, with them and make sure it's up to code and make sure it's right. Um, how the hell did she get water in a fountain? Where did that come from? Mm, Well, her abilities probably are still coming into play as we all know. But there's no pipes there or there weren't pipes. You never know from the earth. (laughs) maybe i don't know that was just but the sinkhole like there was a reason they didn't fix up that park because it wasn't safe yeah like i mean now she's unfortunately you know you grow up you learn things yeah but she doesn't have good people to teach her like the guardians of the globe she doesn't want to be a part of and i get that yeah she thinks of it as more as more violence yeah, which I get. She just wants to help people, but she needs someone to guide her. Like she's eighteen she's years a mentor. old. She's a kid. Yeah, you just you just don't know things. You haven't lived enough because like yeah. it seems like a great idea. Yeah, absolutely. Put those things back together. Let people move back in. But somebody's got to check it and make sure it's all safe. Like yeah, there's you know there's gonna be a way. There's got to be a way that she can work with people to help out. You know. You know, be the light, you know, like um, in the alternate universe where Mark was flying the ambulance faster than it could drive <laughs> or something like, you know, I mean, like there's things she could do. But again, it's scary for the people involved. You got to be everybody's got to know what's going on. Yeah. And like her dad's a complete and utter jerk. I understand why he's mad. The way he is being mad is completely and utterly unacceptable. I, I th- think in time and i hate this this is kind of a trope within super superhero films and shows and things of that nature this is not me reading ahead i have not read any of the invincible stuff further in but when it comes to uh eve's parents her father is a true douche canoe as we all know and i think at a certain point he'll be lost something's gonna happen to him and her mother will be okay with it or completely against it for the fact that she probably feels that, you know, Eve had done something to cause it. But I think it all has to do with his realization that he can't come to grips that his daughter is super powered and has to deal with that situation. And I don't and she's think she's stronger than him. He's used I, to being the bully in the family. Yeah. And I don't think there's ever going to be a resolve. I think that is the reason why we got the Adam Eve mini that we did get before we actually got this particular season. I think we got that small mini movie for that reason alone. I think uh, there's something that's going to be happening to Eve in the near future, maybe by the end of the season. Yeah, I mean, I don't see her dad coming around and be like, oh, I see the error of my ways. I think he's going to, if he dies... He's yeah. going to die a jerk. And I think so, too. But it's also going to be through his own fault and then with her trying to save him at the same time. That's possible. So, but that's my prediction. That's my thoughts. So uh, if you guys think differently, let us know. Always. One thing that I found interesting, though, is like she picked her name as Adam Eve. Mm-hmm. And her dad's name is Adam. Like, why the like? Well, it's spelled atom, A T O M, not A D A M. But still, <laughs> it's still so close. I would have been like, mm, "No thanks." Yeah, but I think that also shows how much power. Her, I just took it as how much power and love she still has for her family. Yeah, even if it, they're being jerks. 
Well, it's her adoptive family, obviously, too, but she loves them nonetheless, regardless yeah, of the anger and and the stupidity, I should say, in it. Um it, it's it's a weird dynamic. But yeah. I think she will follow through and I think she'll probably be stronger than she was before after all of a sudden done. Uh, one thing that I did really, truly enjoy on this, and this is typical superhero trope of like the superhero going and taking their girlfriend who knows about their secret identity and all this stuff, but wanting to see the world as it were from their viewpoint. So Mark gets, uh, Mark's little getaway with Amber and he takes her to Vegas. Well, because her skin would fall off if she went if they went to Paris that fast. Yeah, so they go to the Eiffel Tower because she sees the Eiffel Tower. She goes, "Oh, we're in no, we're in Vegas." Because if I did that, my skin will fall. Your skin will fall off because of my yeah. powers and how fast we would go. Well, they also had a time limit. He only gets she only gets an hour for lunch. Yeah, but it worked out nonetheless, and and it it was cute. Well, and uh, he saw his parents doing that. Like his dad would take his mom to Europe. Like, why don't we go to this place for this and this place for that and blah, blah, blah. And like, it is a perk of having a superhero boyfriend. And I thought it it actually states that she is way too good. Uh, She's way too good for him at times because she is there as like a backbone, you know, emotionally for him. And he's good for her, too. But the funny thing is, is I like when he goes, wait, and he comes back and he has to take her back. It's a work because the look of fear of yeah. like, how do I get down? <laughs> yeah. Like when you start to fly away, I'm like, wait a second. You have to bring her back. She still has to go to work. I don't think they did that dinner date either. Uh, but I I, th- I found that as a, a cute little portion within the, the episode as well. Well, I, I thought Doc Seismic was actually cute and funny as well yeah. and how he, he got it. So we got those funny events. That yeah, kind of like, stable out the uh, as well as the treehouse. It did stable out the the negativity, I should say, within the episode. And there's some other funny moments within it that that follow, which like with the Lizard League and, and the Guardians of the Globe. Uh, <laughs> and they have to go protect them, but uh, I forgot exactly how the outcome was regarding that. Lizard League loses. Yeah. But Rex gets upset because there's somebody that looks a little bit like him because he's like, <laughs> he could change himself into him. I don't know. Not doing this again. <laughs> but uh, they they invite a new person. And who's that person? I forgot his name. Shapesmith. Okay. Shapesmith. Is what he's called, but it's really Russ. Yeah. So Slash they, the Martian. <laughs> yeah. Well. You know, it works out. Perfectly normal human who got his power powers in a normal human way. <laughs> <laughs> Rush, Trish, no one to will suspect. In. No one will suspect until he has to be in two places at once. <laughs> He's got that Superman issue. <laughs> yeah. Still, like it was like you know, get your head on straight, and he looks in the mirror. And- <laughs> Tilts it to the side. Like, it's not straight. <laughs> uh, then we get Cecil sending Mark to the Atlanteans, which is uh, yeah. the prime portion of the particular episode. And uh, we get uh, Mark having to go back because Omni Man killed <laughs> the Atlantean king. So it's his way. And the way to resolve this issue is for him to, to marry the queen. Or, but apparently that was too archaic. Yeah. So and that now archaic he, practice has no, been stopped. We don't do that anymore. So it's trial by combat. <laughs> I think maybe marrying the queen might have been better, but. Yeah. yeah. But, well, it's, it's this all. The title literally stems from what's in Mark's mind going, I have to lose my virginity to a fish. <laughs> so that comes into play with this. But uh, they, uh, Mark has to deal with a sea monster that is shackled and then comes out from a crevice. Uh, At first, it's a little anglerfish. Yeah, it's an it's anglerfish. A cute little seahorse. He, he tries to beat it up and it's like squeaking, squeak, squeak, squeak. Like, and nope, that's not the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, and then when it comes up, he's like, oh, this makes way more sense. I'm like, yeah. 
Yeah, it's cute. We, at we first, all saw but this then coming. You get the realism. <laughs> I mean, you saw it coming a long way. Uh, Mark kind of gets beat up pretty heavily. He's underwater with the mask on because obviously he can't breathe underwater. But through the struggles and everything, and then Cecil tells him to pretty much get away. Well, they sent the backup in, which I watched. I'm like watching the I'm like backup. What kind of backup? Come? Oh, missiles. This is going to backfire. Oh, yep. Yeah, it did. <laughs> it did. Yeah. And uh, it the, the sea creature gets away from its own chains and shackles. Because, and, yeah, one of them broke. And then it starts destroying the Atlanteans at that point. And some of them are, you know, getting hurt and killed. So Mark has a struggle because Cecil's like, get out of there. He literally wants them to get away and let them die. And I'm like, and then Mark's like, no, and because it's just within Mark and he has to go back and he does help them and he stops the creature. Yeah. He sends he it proves further that down. He's not his dad. Yeah. He proves he's not his dad, which is uh, nice. And the Atlanteans. Yeah. Do appreciate that and love that. And it's like, okay, you, 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 you did what you had to do. Thank you. <laughs> and do his powers not work as well in the water? I think he hasn't learned to use them yet is what it is. Yeah, he's still learning. He just received his powers, what, a year ago? Yeah. <laughs> and the person training him is now gone. Yeah, and that person was a piece of crap. Yeah. <laughs> Which was his own father. But... Yeah, and then after this, we get the Lizard League. No, not the Lizard League. You just spoke about him in the very beginning. The person that we left off at the end of the last episode. Oh, you're talking about Angstrom? Yep. Oh, that's the, that's the after credits. First, we have the Lizard League, the change in leadership in the Lizard League. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> and we go from the Supreme Lizard back to the King Lizard. And the lizard people don't seem to give a crap <laughs> who's <laughs> leading them. Uh, I, 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 I don't know. Maybe I kind of phased it out of my head. They were like kind of secondary villains. <laughs> I'm still waiting for the Mauler twins to come back or the Mauler. <laughs> I know. I miss them. <laughs> but yeah, finally is that um, Angstrom. Now, it, that's not our world. That's an alternate world. Correct. Did you notice the sign in front of the Pentagon? No. It said the Pentagon, you know, United States Pentagon, and then it said parking in front. <laughs> I was like, that's so weird. I'm like, does it really say that in real life? I've never been to the Pentagon, so I don't know. No, it does not. They have a separate parking lot. <laughs> I've been there, been there a few times. <laughs> yeah, it said, you know, and then it said parking in front. I was like, because I rewound it to see if there was like some. I don't know. Something that told you it was an alternate universe. Yeah. And that's what I saw the parking for. I'm like, that's so weird. That's so funny. <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, look forward to see what we got from Angstrom and so coming up. Is he the one who caught Mark? Or did he just come to where Mark, a, a universe where Mark was already caught? I believe and he came to a universe where Mark was already caught. And being bad. Yes. Yeah. That's that's literally what it is. He, because he has that ability to jump from universe to universe. He's not in the prime universe that we are looking at when it comes to Mark at this point. So, like I said last episode, like with the, the last podcast, when we were discussing the first, you know, episode this is very much almost DC and Marvel in the sense of how they mimic with multiversal jumping. And this wobbly, is just, timey, wimey. Exactly. And then, uh, you know, we're not going to have a, a doctor who there to help them along this way. But the thing is, is that they, we're going to have this issue where it's going to be multi-universal and there's going to be a cataclysm between the prime universe that we know and angstrom and in his manipulation of the different universes and an inclusion of other people from that and like i stated last episode or last podcast i wouldn't you know i wouldn't put it past them that they actually get the alternate version of mark 
and have yeah. Mark on Mark on a you know see the who truly is invincible, and I yeah. wouldn't put it past them that that happens at the end of the season. So we only have two more episodes. So it's going to be the last huh. episode, most likely. Of the, or maybe I think in they're between probably a half season. We do get another four episodes next year at some point in time. Yeah, but. We'll see. They're go- yeah. probably going to leave it on a, a, if they do say it's a half season for season two and we do get something next year, then uh, it will be the uh, mid season finale. Yeah, it's so going to be it's gonna cliffhanger, fall, dramatic, but, something. Yeah, it's going to Or we'll be t- totally wrong in two weeks. <laughs> eh, we'll find out. Yep. <laughs> but uh, yeah, with that, that's all I had as far as like notes and information, what I liked about it. But uh, like I always say, I, I look forward to see what we do continue to get. And I really do enjoy the show. Uh, I didn't see any flaw within it. The only issue is it's like I, I, I just like the Lizard League. Uh, it's secondary, but you know, it's a secondary banana villain. Yeah, it's probably going to just keep popping up. <laughs> I think they're going to show some sort of importance at a later point, but we don't know exactly when. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they're gonna screw something up or league with somebody else, and I wouldn't put it past them. And uh, it would be great if uh, Mauler runs away from Angstrom and helps out, and you know, Mark as invincible. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> but uh, we'll we'll see what happens when it comes. These are just theories and thoughts that come out of my head as well as Jamie's. So we just have yeah, we fun. haven't read the comic. We don't have we don't know what's happening. We haven't read any spoilers. I I read a bit of the comic, but not all of it. So I didn't really I get tried. further into. I know you tried. <laughs> I did. It's the uh, the animation inside of it that you weren't really into. Yeah, I didn't like the way it was drawn. Yeah. But uh, the only quotes that I had was, uh, uh, I have two of them. One's from Doc Seismic saying, I'm Doc Seismic. I never taught a class because Mark was saying, wait, you're a professor of seismology. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I just love how William comes out of the blue in the treehouse when they like everybody's looking down and trodden. It's like just after graduation, they thought there would be more. And he looks at Eve and he goes, it's graduating high school, not losing your virginity. (laughs) (laughs) I don't feel different. Eve was like, (laughs) I have, I have a William quote too. It's like, uh, when they say the Lincoln quote in the graduation speech, did he though? Did he really say that? It doesn't sound very (laughs) Lincoln-y. Oh, you just got to love his naivete. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, later, Mark was like, I can't marry a fish. I have a girlfriend. (laughs) Well, strict, basically coming straight from the the actual title of the episode. (laughs) Pretty close to it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. That's all I had. That's cool. But uh, yeah, uh, we didn't get any uh, feedback. I checked. I actually did post something, everybody. So <laughs> I saw it. I, I put it on Instagram. I put it on Facebook. I believe I shared it. And, uh, yeah. And I, I mentioned about the Gmail. So uh, with that, we will mention a little bit about feedback. Obviously, you can find us on our Facebook group, which would be facebook.com forward slash panels to pixels. You can also see our Instagram, which is at panels to pixels podcast. Uh, both images are there. I always put in like what we're promoting for the week and what we're covering. I did that for this particular episode with the cool image of uh, Mark underwater and stuff with the uh, logo for panels. Uh, you, you could just easily put your comments in the image below whenever you see stuff like that. I do that for Gen V. I do that for Invincible. Uh, I will be doing that for the Marvels, which will be covering towards the end of this week. Uh, no, you should be it. getting this out uh, to you November 14th. So sooner, sooner, soon as I, uh, Jamie and I wrap up, I'll be releasing this episode. It will be not raw, but it will be cleaned up. So it's audible to your ears. And I just like to make things a little bit more natural lately. So we like to get this uh, stuff out to you sooner. Um, you could also email us at uh 
uh, panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels two is spelled out to pixels and the number one at Gmail. You can just write out your thoughts. We'll read them on the, the podcast as uh, regular feedback. Or if you're able to record your voice through your cell phone, your iPad, your computer, what have you, and send that as an attachment on the email, we will play it. So that way you can actually have your voice on the podcast as well. And we would like to talk about your feedback. Uh, we are a lot of people are finding us on different ways to listen to us. Uh, we could be found on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or whatever podcast player of choice. Uh, or actually, everywhere. Been, or everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I actually, I, uh, you'll laugh, Jamie. I test listen to the podcast after I upload it, and it's on my, guess what? I'm going to say her name, but you better not answer. Alexa. So <laughs> I listen to it on that, and it's pretty cool. And uh, I... You know, the one I have, I don't, I think it might be too old, kind of boxy. <laughs> yeah. But if I listen to it on my Apple TV, it's, it's pretty funny. It sounds pretty good through my theater system and my TV. But, uh, you know, it, we're on Amazon Music. So you can check us out there as well. But we're also on YouTube and YouTube podcasts. So you can check us out. All you have to do is look for Panels to Pixels podcast. Uh, I've, the actual YouTube page is Panels to Pixels podcast. So, if you like what we're doing, you want to see other video content, if I'm able to get people to be on more interviews, video interviews, that'd be great. Uh, but we do do the po- uh, the actual podcast and put, put it out there and you could listen to it as like a regular YouTube video or as a podcast. Uh, while you're there, just please subscribe, give a thumbs up and ring the bell to be notified whenever you get the, you know, the newest episode is up. So that way you, you're in the know. And when something is new there, because you never know, something will just come out sporadically because I didn't post anything and I'm an idiot. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can hear us there and do that. And word of mouth is always great. And with all the podcast players of choice, please give us a rating or review when they're there. It'd be really great, greatly appreciated if you give us a five star review as always. But I always like to have people to be honest. So, uh, if you have any thoughts of what we could change, what you would like us to do differently, uh, something that you would like to input, please do so and put that in the notes as well. We'll take that into consideration. Uh, well, this is a point where other people could listen to you, Jamie. Uh, right now, still the only thing on my schedule is the watched it in the 80s ET coverage. Um, we were going to do it yesterday. Mm-hmm. Had some stuff come up, so we're gonna try and record next Monday. Um, All right. Possibly still be out around Thanksgiving is the goal. All right, cool. Uh, well, where else can you listeners hear me? Well, obviously, right here on Panels Pixels Podcast. Like I already mentioned, we're going to be covering the Marvels. We wrapped up Gen V. Uh, we're going to continue our coverage on Invincible, and we're uh, awaiting for anything else. For us to cover eventually there's going to be more stuff coming out i'm forgetting a lot too but i'm sure there'll be something and i'll make you aware of that just follow us on the facebook page instagram all that cool stuff uh you could also hear me on adrenaline cinema podcast uh there we cover action adventure fantasy suspense movie thrillers that are out there anything that gets your adrenaline going uh the last thing that we put out was total recall uh, that was the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie from the early 90s that Jason Gabassi from Podcastka joined me on. And it was fun to do. Uh, I love Jason. He's he's fun to, to talk to. We had a good conversation on that one. I look forward to doing another Apes movie with our friend Jerry. Uh, Jamie and I are looking to cover Friday the 13th final chapter. So uh, I'm, I already got the doc up, J- Jamie. So it's just a matter of when you and I could coordinate. So we'll do that. And My schedule's then, always busy. I know that. <laughs> but I will be looking for other people. Our, my friend Ben Elmore was more interested in doing some more content as well on the podcast. So I'll be asking Ben to do some more stuff later on. He just needs to choose and pick a movie. Uh, and then uh, I'm trying to get with uh, Damien to see if we could actually do Explorers for Watched It in the 80s. Because I really want to cover that. I don't really want to cover it on adrenaline. Uh, it's more or less uh, his 
venue when it comes to uh, 80s movies. But uh, you could also hear me on Fantasy Picks Movie Edition, and that can be found as well on the Pirate Core Entertainment Network. Uh, a lot of people are not giving any hits, so I might actually share the uh, the podcast information for it. But we did our top five monster movies. So uh, check that out when I do post that or repost it to uh, the social media. So it'd be greatly appreciated if you show Rob some love. He's going to be on uh, the new Captain, uh, the Marvels review that we're going to do here on Panels to Pixels. That'll be interesting. I've heard really good things about that movie. I just haven't had time to go see it. Um, I'm uh, I'm a bit mixed. I'm not saying I didn't enjoy it, but to sum up my overall thoughts before we get too in depth, I enjoyed the movie. Uh, uh, I think a lot more writing was needed I, in continuity. That's about it. Uh, more in-depth information. If you guys want to hear that, check out the next episode. We're going to get into a massive discussion <laughs> about that particular movie. One person was not particularly in liking that movie. So uh, there might be a little bit of a debate on that. But uh, it might be Rob, myself, Steve, and hopefully somebody else if they want to come on. So with that, uh, that was our podcast on Invincible Season 2, Episode 2. And uh, yeah, I'm Mark. I'm Jamie. <laughs> and this was Panel's Pixel Podcast. And we'll see you on the next panel. Goodbye. Talk to you soon. Night.